Panic Zone. I am Steve Durai, America's Voice, delivering an equitable, diverse, inclusive broadcast for you, using only environmentally, you know, safe topics that maintain maximum sustainability, of course, socially correct and earth-friendly conversations, too, that, you know, don't endanger any animals, at least not today so far. Here are three big things you need to know right now. Number one, Pete Buttigieg getting hammered for saying construction crews are just too white in America and that they should better reflect the communities in which they are working. Nothing like some lefty racism to start the day, like usual. Number two, another Republican has joined the race to be president in 2024. Nikki Haley, the former governor and U.N. ambassador, is officially in the run. And number three, the nation's eyes remain fixed on Michigan State University in the aftermath of the mass shooting that claimed the lives of three students, left five more of their classmates in critical condition at Lansing Sparrow Hospital. All five remain there today. They have survived the first few hours. That's critical. The three killed by what can only be described right now as a random act of violence have been identified as Ariel Anderson, a junior from Gross Point, Brian Frazier, also from Gross Point, and Alexandria Werner, a junior from Clawson. The killer, a 43-year-old Anthony McRae, who killed himself about three hours after the attack while being confronted by Lansing police several miles away, not believed to have any connection to the university at all. And so we're going to continue to watch uh, this story and keep it in mind for you because the whole nation continues to watch what happened at Michigan State. But we're going to shift gears a little bit today and get into some things that are you know, always important that we're not paying attention to because we have a big distraction like this, which we should pay attention to. And then you look at what's going on with the news media. And is it any wonder that nobody trusts the people claiming to be honest brokers of information every single day? Let me give you some examples. The New York Times and the Washington Post are still holding on to Pulitzer Prizes they won for reporting on the Russian dossier, something that has been proven beyond any doubt whatsoever to have been completely fabricated. Bought and paid for by Hillary Clinton's campaign to discredit Donald Trump. They still have not fully admitted the Hunter Biden laptop is the real deal. And it implicates the sitting president of the United States in a series of shady and quite likely illegal entanglements with foreign governments. That would include influence peddling at a minimum, and it appears very possible far more. Yet the kids at NBC, CBS, and the rest, they just don't seem to care. We all know the southern border's been wide open for at least two years now. It's gotten so bad the Canadians are screaming about it because too many illegals are now showing up at their border and crossing in. We know that controlling the narrative is about the biggest part of controlling all of us. Keep us all on the same page so they can keep us feeding what they want us to believe, but not giving us straight answers on a host of other really important questions. For example, tell us climate change is an existential threat and then drain train cars full of highly toxic chemicals and light them on fire in Ohio because that's a good idea? Come on. Just ask the folks in East Palestine, where dogs and cats and chickens have been dropping dead ever since February 3rd. While the governor there says everything's fine, and FEMA, nowhere to be found, neither is Pete Buttigieg. At the same time, we're told how awful fossil fuel is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And yet President Joe Biden is whining that the oil companies that he and his far left Green New Deal buddies have been attacking relentlessly are not investing in new refineries. No kidding, old man. Why would they? Well, Joe now says gas and oil will be here for a long time. I don't know how to explain it, but listen. Corporate America. You had the oil companies. You know how much they made in profit this year? $200 billion in the middle of an energy crisis. Because they bought back their stock, and they're not investing in refineries, repairing them, or maintaining them. Now, they're saying, and that's a legitimate argument they make, they say, Biden, you want to go all, uh, you, you want to go green, and in 10 years, we won't need this. Well, guess what? We're going to need oil for a long time gas for a long time. It's not going to go all go away. But they're, oh. look at all the refineries that are closed because they're not investing in the nature of the business they're involved in, is one example. Well, gee, Joey, you keep saying we're going to get rid of all those things. You're going to end fossil fuels. You promised it to every person on the campaign trail that wandered up to you of the three people that came to your rallies. <clears throat> Why would they not invest? I can't figure it out. And for those who attend meetings in places like Davos and think there should be a single ruling body on the planet, they're almost giddy about the rapid increase in computer power on just about every level. This is exciting for them. 
all of this AI stuff. Klaus Schwab is saying the most frightening things these days are about the future and how AI masters will rule the world in 10 years. Frightening for me. Loved by him. Listen to Klaus Schwab. And we are just now where we move into the exponential phase. And I agree. Artificial intelligence, but not only artificial intelligence, <clears throat> but also the metaverse, new space technologies, and I could go on and on, synthetic biology. Our life in 10 years from now will be completely different, very much affected, and who masters those technologies in some way will be the master of the world. Yeah, we'll be the masters of the world, whoever masters AI. You know, Terry Sawchuk on this program a number of times in the last couple of years said, we're going to change more in 10 years than we have in 10,000. Rings in my ears. Because I think he's right. Klaus Schwab also sending ominous warnings about a major cyber attack. And it's like he is predicting it's coming and will make COVID lockdowns look small by comparison. Listen to this ominous comment. Pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. We have this to bring you to your knees. You will submit, you will surrender. I mean, could you paint or create a better villain in Hollywood, I don't think so. We are there to make sure that you do not survive the cyber attack. Good God. Seriously, what a frightening individual. The guy that pulls the puppet strings at the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab. And doesn't it sound like he's predicting that there'll be a cyber attack of some significance? Doesn't it sound like he is looking at the crystal ball being a seer into the future. Certainly sounds that way to me as if he knows something. Like, you know, like he knew about what might happen with a pathogen that got loose from a lab in Wuhan. Klaus Schwab. Villain. Come on, man. Would you follow that guy anywhere? No. Uh, we've got a lot more after the break because not everybody's falling in line. Me included, apparently. I'm such a rebel. At any rate, good to have you here. It's the Steve Gruber Show. Find out more at stevegruber.com. Be sure to follow me on YouTube. Brand new documentary there on the American Dream. It's about a half an hour long. If you go to YouTube, follow me. It's free. Check out the new documentary. I know some of you don't do YouTube. That's fine. I do. All right? I'll be right back.